going to play through a Beethoven sonata for you. And first I want to just, because I am so convinced that this composer is so vast, I mean, it's like we're little pygmies. He does everything so wondrously. It's a great universe. I have no idea what he does. I'm always learning. Ernest Bloch wrote to his um, daughter. He was like 75 years old, and he was in Oregon on a vacation. And he says, I'm analyzing the Eroica once more. I keep learning from it over and over. What do you learn? You can't put it in the bank. You can't buy it. The pharaohs can't take it with them. I just think it's worth studying these sonatas because it is such a wealth. Each one is so different. There's not one that has anything to do with the other. They're so highly finished, so right. And I think it's important to listen on different levels, not just as Kodai said, bathe in the music as we do, bathe in this constant music of all kinds. It never stops. But to just, and not analyze it in the sense that an analysis is paralysis, and I do believe that. I mean, just let it live. Take a look at it. Study it. See it. Now, this is not one of his great sonatas. It's not, they're all wonderful. This is not one of his most profound rather funny at times, as I'll point out. And I don't know what I will really find right now. I never know. But I'll go through this, and I want you to hear. Now, you know that a sonata has an exposition, a development, and a recapitulation. The composer exposes his themes, and then he develops them if he, had, if he wants, he can add some new material, and then he recaps them. And all of this is to make certain that everything goes home to the right key, because the key, the tonality, is everything with Beethoven. And this is an F major, and he's going to end his develop, he's going to end his exposition in C major. He's going to make sure that that recapitulation of his themes ends in F major. I won't even talk right now about the second movement or the third. And I'm going to just play you at random from the exposing. And you have, this is no test. You just listen to whatever I do. And then I'll play the movement. And we will see what our recognition is. Someone will get it in 14 hearings, will start feeling this oneness with the piece. Someone in five, someone in a thousand hearings. It doesn't matter. The point is, is hearing anything on a different level except just having it wash over you. I think some of the material is rather stupid. I think Beethoven would have said that too. He doesn't write gorgeous nocturne melodies like Chopin, you know. Not interested in titillating you and listen. No. He's not interested in you fainting away. Those are silly emotions for Beethoven. He's interested in tonality, he's interested in development of a incredible universe within this time arc called music. And he could go longer than anyone. Bach, maybe he could go with his preludes and fugues, seven or eight minutes with the preludes and fugues. Just abstract music, no words. This is the height of romanticism, no words, nothing. Scarlatti could go four minutes in his little binary form with the repeats. Exquisite jewel. But Beethoven could create a world that could go on almost forever. 
in this great Sonata idea, which Tobey said this Sonata idea is one of man's immense concepts, and it is. Beethoven doesn't care about that, though. He just is writing something new in every opus number. It's not terribly interesting. A little triplet. Try to remember that. He likes that little triplet. He does something in the exposition with it again. He goes down in a triplet. He likes a triplet of accompaniment. Not exactly fantastic. C, E, G. The tune is not big deal. Then he's having a little fun. Then he repeats it instead of I'm not going to go into ecstasy. It's sarcastic. It's a little lyrical. It's a little Star Spangled Banner here. It's a little galan. It's a little humorous. I like the way it changes his key here. Like a donkey there. you know, the, uh, um, the, the marking to repeat the exposition in a sonata. So when you hear it again, it's because the composer really took seriously his gifted amateurs that worked on this and his audiences because they heard tonality in a, I think, in a more refined way than we do. It was very new, exciting, it was building, it was an ever new thing. They didn't write books about sonata form at all. And So that double bar, by the way, as I was just saying, usually a pianist or a violinist repeats it. And today everyone's worried about the repeats. God forbid you don't do a repeat or whatever. Well, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I mean, fine. But if you want your audience maybe to um, hear the things over again, to get the exposition themes in your mind, that was why they did it, I think, then let's go and... Um, find out what he does in his development section. And this is where, of course, Beethoven is always different. Always more sublime, more interesting, more incredible than any other composer. Haydn had started in his late London symphonies really being incredible in his development section. And Beethoven really took it over because that's the fun of developing the stuff. Now let's see what he develops. Does he develop uh, this? Repetition. Let's 
into F. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> now, some guy like Alfred Grendel, a big Beethoven expert, when he sees this, it's so funny to him that he goes, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> and that's just the way he laughs. <laughs> what the, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> what does Beethoven do? Gotta do, you know, he's gotta get us back into the just like in the opening. He's got to work all of his material into F. He's got to come home to F. He gives you what you would call a false recapitulation, and it's a delicious stroke. He knows he's in trouble. He's got himself in trouble. He wants you to understand he's in trouble. He's done with his stupid theme. He says, hold, he's thinking. He's telling the pianist, think. He's stuck on the dominant of D. What am I going to do? He does this. He gives you, instead of these. I'll get out of this, kids. I'll get home. That's what tonality is about. That's what it's about. He's in the And Grendel goes, <laughs> Soon that. Well, here's your D major again. There it is. He's, he's got you. He's B flat. He's so happy. Listen to him. He can't believe his good luck. And now he's home. Get bored and add one new little theme in F 
minor. He takes it away. trio in B-flat. It's not a minuet like the old-fashioned minuet because he had now already invented the scherzo, but he doesn't also want a scherzo here. And it's not a slow movement because he says it's allegretto. He wants it to move. Yet it has pathos in it. It has a certain sometimes sadness. It has a strangeness. It's like a half minuet and a, and a half scherzo. Maybe it's the, and it's, the, it's the beginning of the allegretto of the Seventh Symphony. I don't know. Then there's a the last movement, which is short, very curious. It starts out like a cannon. We find out it's another sonata form movement, the strange little piece. And I must tell you, I don't like this sonata at all. <laughs> I mean, my temperament, I am not interested in it. But you see, Beethoven is beyond likes or dislikes.
Beethoven Beethoven's Sonata. Do you hear the first movement a little differently? No one did. All that energy of mine gone to waste. Doesn't matter. 